In today's video, we are going to be replacing the screen on this iPad Air 4. Now, as you guys can see, it is pretty badly damaged internally. Externally, there's no damage on the outside, but the internal LCD is damaged. So we're going to be replacing the screen on this Air 4. Now, the model that we're going to be working on today is the Wi-Fi only version of this model. There is a cellular and Wi-Fi version as well, and they do both use different parts. So it is very important that you distinguish between the models. That way, you use the correct part whenever you do your repair. Now, to start, we are going to heat our iPad on this heating mat here. We're going to heat it up on both sides, the front and the back, at 174 degrees Fahrenheit. After about 10 minutes or so, we're going to remove it, and we are going to start removing our screen. We have this really thin pry tool uh, that we have dipped in isopropyl alcohol. We are also going to be using a suction cup and we are going to be wearing a heat resistant glove so we don't burn our hand. Now it's not really really hot but if you do tend to leave your hand on there for a while it is going to sting after a bit. So like I said the suction cup is just so we can get a better grip onto the screen. Just go along the edge of the frame of the iPad. You don't want to go too far in. That way you don't tear any essential cables that are inside. Just a little bit of the edge should be enough, especially with the isopropyl alcohol, that would definitely help out a lot. Now, at the beginning I said the screen externally is not broken. As you guys can see, it's not. It's just the internal LCD, but we are still taking really good care of the screen. In these circumstances, we don't necessarily have to take that good of care of the screen. Since it is broken, we are going to be replacing it. But, say for instance, if this repair didn't require us to go into the iPad and replace the screen, say if it was an internal problem, uh, something internally that would have to be replaced, then in these circumstances, practicing, you know, having that patience to be able to remove the screen without it breaking does make good practice. So that way you don't damage it if you don't have to replace it. Once we are inside of our iPad, we're going to open up the screen. Now the screen, we recommend that you hold the screen at around a 90 degree angle. You don't want to go any more further than that for the same reason being that you don't want to damage any essential cables that you'd see here. There are three cables that are going to be running out of the screen. So you don't want to damage those for whatever reason, even if you aren't replacing the screen. So you hold the screen at about a 90 degree angle and then you can get inside and start removing the screws. There are a few screws that we're going to be removing here, uh, as well as a couple of brackets as well. We're going to start by removing our battery screw. This screw holds down the battery. The battery makes contact with two pins that are underneath. So you're going to remove that screw right there. We're also going to be using something similar to a razor blade now this is a fake razor blade uh, it is a plastic razor blade so it's not sharp it's dull uh, we're going to be using that to pry up on our battery just to hold it up and as well once we pry up on that battery connector right there we're going to place our finger on the power button and we're going to hold it down just for a few seconds just so that way our battery discharges completely and it runs the risk of the battery damaging itself during the process of the screen replacement. Afterwards, we're going to remove our brackets that you can see here. There are a couple of screws that are right there. And when replacing them, it is very important that you put everything in the same order that you removed it. After those brackets have been removed, you're going to see and have access to the three connectors that are on the screen. We're going to still use our same plastic razor blade to get underneath it you can use your fingernail as well you can also use a guitar pick but you're going to go underneath those connectors pry up on them gently just so you don't damage anything on the motherboard and that way you can remove your screen afterwards without any hesitation and worrying about damaging any of the flexes So like I said, it is going to take a little bit of patience, but it does pay off in the end. Now here we have our new screen. This is going to be the screen that we're going to be using. This screen is already fully prepped. 
this is the way that it arrives uh, fully prepped with double sided adhesive already on the sides cut to fit all we'd have to do essentially is just clean everything up so that way the new screen could go on there nice and flush without any issues so all that white that you see around the edges that is the double sided adhesive that we will be removing right now we're going to set the new screen off to the side and we're going to focus now on cleaning our frame now it is very important and this is where you're going to have to spend most of your time uh, because like i said cleaning your frame is essential to your screen sitting nice and flush on your frame uh, it is going to be really more or less not painstakingly long <laughs> but it is essential that you can get a little rag isopropyl alcohol remove any of the old adhesive that is on the frame so that way it's nice and clean and that way it doesn't affect the way that your screen fits now if you've made it this far into the video and you have found it helpful so far please be sure to subscribe like the video share the video this helps us make more content like this it lets us know what you guys want to see and that way we can provide the same amount of content that we always want to do for you guys you know in the sense of helping you guys out do your own repairs or simply if this is an informational or instructional video for you guys this is the type of content that we want to do and it really helps if you guys do like the video share the video give us feedback down in the comments below so any suggestions are appreciated as well now after a while your screen your frame sorry is going to be a lot more cleaner and now afterwards we can start prepping our new screen so the new screen, like I said, does come with double-sided adhesive already cut to fit on. All you would have to do is just simply remove the paperback that's on it. Once you remove that paper, the double-sided adhesive will basically be ready to stick. So just make sure that everything is removed. It's a long process, but in the end it does pay off, like I said. If you are looking to do your own repairs, this is helpful. So you remove all of the old paper from the adhesive strips on the back of the screen. Afterwards, you can reconnect your screen. And what you'd like to do mainly beforehand, uh, when you are connecting your screen, be sure that you feel a click or you somewhat hear a slight click whenever you are placing them back it does help and it lets you know that you actually have connected the screen right if you don't feel a click or you don't hear a click don't try to push the connector in you might damage the connector either on the screen or on the motherboard so everything is going to be placed back after you've connected all of your connections that you need to connect you are going to place back those brackets that you're removed earlier these like I said are important that you do place everything in the correct order that you removed it that way it makes it a lot easier when you're putting everything back together so once you've done that once you put your brackets back everything is nice and screwed in your battery is nice and screwed in as well we're going to go ahead and test it out before we fully close it out. Now we're just gonna test out the tactile feature here of the touch, make sure that it's functioning properly. If there is anything that's not functioning right, this would be the time before you fully close it out to make any adjustments that you have to do. That way uh, you don't close it up and then say if something's not working right, you have to reopen it, risking the screen being broken when you try to get back into it to fix whatever's not working properly. Now another adhesive that we use is this B7000. On top of the double-sided adhesive that the screen has already, we will be running a thin bead of this around the frame and it does help the double-sided adhesive adhere a little bit more to the frame. 
So, like I said, we just run one continuous thin bead around the frame, and that should be enough to help it out stick. And here you go. Afterwards, what we're going to do, we're going to place it on some clamps, not too pressurized, uh, just enough so that way it gives it enough time for it to dry. But we're going to be placing it on some clamps so that way it dries nice and flush. And that is another repair done. So like I said, if you did find this video informational, please like, subscribe, share the video, leave any comments or feedback down in the comments below. And we're more than happy to help you out if you guys ever have anything.